I'm Iris Johnston and welcome to Page to Screen where we explore the art and craft of screenwriting and filmmaking. This show is a production of the Tennessee Screenwriting Association. For more information, please visit us online at www.tenscreen.com or follow us on Facebook. I'd like to thank our members who turned out tonight in our audience and the studio crew here who made all of this possible. Yay. 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 Okay, so joining us tonight is William Akers, a fellow Tennessean and the author of Your Screenplay Sucks. Yeah. 100 Ways to Make It Great. <laughs> and, a little, but in 100 Ways to Make It Great. A little uplift right there at the end. That's right. No, I love the title. So I guess, William, maybe just let us know a little bit about who you are. I'm six foot two. <laughs> um, I'm from Nashville. I grew up here. I started always wanting to be a cartoonist. That was what I was most interested in for all into college. Uh -huh. And then the kind of comic strip I wanted to do went away, which is the story strip. And I thought, well, mm -hmm. keep going. And so I, I took a film class at Vanderbilt and I went to film school at USC in Los Angeles and started writing immediately. And I got unbelievably lucky and the first script I wrote got made. And I thought, this is really easy. What was and the first script? It's called title? The Wolves of Willoughby Chase. Okay. And it's not easy, as it turns out. Yeah. And um, so I wrote and I wrote and I wrote, and I came to Na back to Nashville, moved back here, and started teaching at Vanderbilt. I was there 19 years, taught filmmaking and screenwriting. And then Belmont came and found me, and I started their film department about 10 years ago. And we, it's got 250 students now, and mm -hmm. doing really well. It's the name of the top 30 film school by Variety, which is. Wow, really nice. that's great. And I'm not there. I've retired and given the job to somebody else, but yeah. I've started it. Maybe we can just start with uh, the beginning of the book kind of takes us, what do you need in Act 1? Right. And there's a lot. A lot. <laughs> this is not a comprehensive list. <laughs> okay. This sounds silly, but you got to know who your main character is right away. Really? Yes. yes. You wouldn't believe how sometimes they don't show up soon enough. Okay. And the main character, they've got to want something, and you've got to know what it is really quickly. They've got to want it really, really badly. Mm -hmm. The stakes, if they don't get what they want, have got to be high. We, the, everything has to be up there, as high as you can make it. You have to have an opponent or an antagonist, somebody who is trying to keep them from getting what they want. Once you've got that, the hero, the opponent, what the stakes are and what they want, you're close to getting in business. The biggest mistake that people make is they put way too much backstory in the first act. Mm -hmm. Just they tell us stuff and they set stuff up and they teach us stuff and it's all a waste of time. And you could just, I, often when I'm consulting, I write on page 17, this is where fade in is. Is that right? Or 20. Mm -hmm. And I did it, I mean, every mistake there is to make, I've made. Sure. I, last two scripts ago, I tore out the first 20 pages and said, oh, there's the beginning right. of fade. That's where fade in is. I know so exactly. that's yeah. a big problem. You have to have an inciting incident. And as Michael Arndt said, what the inciting incident does is blow the hero's world apart. So it's got to be big. This is a huge problem, again, with beginning writers, is it's like a thing that happens. It's not a thing that happens, it's a big thing that happens. And in, like the end of Act One also has to be in there. Oh, really, yeah. And it's got to be huge. And my line is it has to be able to be seen from space. And you have to have a huge change in the character's direction. And people, it's often, it's just like one more thing that happens. Yeah. You go, which one is the act break? I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's not quite big enough. Have you seen it... Paddington 2? I have not. You should. I've heard it's great. It has the best act breaks I've really? seen in the last 15 okay. years. So yeah, they're surprising and believable and gigantic. Okay. Um, another thing, what you don't want to have in your first act is confusion between the reader and what you've written. They need to be able to understand mm -hmm. it. I, I just wanted to pause on the inciting incident. Yes. There's a lot of people that give you a page number like by this page. Um, by you, sooner would be my so, page number. As soon as possible. I mean, 11 yeah. to 20, I mean, it depends. Everything is okay. different, but earlier is better because you've got to keep people interested okay. without a doubt. What you don't want to have in the first act is things that mean one thing to you and they mean something else to the reader. You have to be able to communicate by the written word what you want, have in your head. They got to understand it. And it's amazing how many times you see things that the writer thought they knew what it meant. And when you read it, you go, this isn't what it says. Yeah. And that's really important. 
I don't guess there's an example of that. I'm trying to imagine what Anything that... I've written. <laughs> <laughs> is so, it because you're trying to be too clever, too... Um, or too wordy is too often wordy? a problem. I blame English teachers. Uh-oh. Because the, when you're in school, all your life, you've learned that the more words on the page, the higher your grade. And that's not the case when you're writing something that somebody's going to give you money for. That's in a screenplay, yeah, absolutely. The less, less is better. They got to understand it and then they got to move on. And one, one thing I can add about the opponent, it has to be a person. It has to be. You got to have a human opponent. You can't just have okay. my angst. Mm -hmm. I got you. You're my opponent. Am I? Yeah. And okay. so we have two people, we can have a conversation. But if it's just inner angst, you can't, there's no conflict there. It's a pain in the neck to write and it's a pain in the neck to read. So you have to have a human opponent. Okay. Like nature doesn't do it. That can be a problem. Okay. It could be, and yeah. you And there's always going to be an exception to the rule. The Robert Redford movie where he's out in the boat, that's nature. Yeah. But. That's really rare. I okay. wouldn't recommend don't, it. Don't try to write that, probably. My advice. Yes, I hear you. You have a quote that's um, by Michael Arndt, right? Yeah. Has to blow the main character's world apart. This happens at the end of Act One? That's the inciting incident. That's the inciting incident. Okay, so that blows it all apart. That gets it going. That gets, yeah. Now, but it can't just be he falls down. <laughs> right. It's got to be way, way, way bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And so what, what happens at the end of Act One? Uh, the, the hero gets launched into a brand new world and it's, it's a very different place than it was at the beginning. It's very important at the beginning of Act One that the hero starts with a problem. He's already got a problem mm -hmm. at the beginning. When we meet her, she's got a problem mm -hmm. and it's a big problem. And then at the end of Act One, it's morphed into something much, much worse or much more interesting, but it's different and she's, you're opening the door into Act Two where all kinds of terrible things happen. So, you've written your screenplay, let's say. Congratulations, Yay! you have a draft. That's, yeah, that's an accomplishment. But now, you've gotta go back and rewrite it. No, you it. just sell it. <laughs> it's, it just it worked yeah. out perfect the first time. Great, okay, so talk me through. Um, now you gotta rewrite it. The rewrite, And yeah. again, and again, and again, and yeah. again. There's a quote in the book, my quote, but I really like it, just because you're sick of your script, doesn't mean it's finished. Uh -huh. And that's yep. unbelievably true. Yeah. I mean, you have to work it until it's done, not until you're sick of working on it. Right. And you can't say, oh, I've worked so hard on this. It must be done. It must be no. done, yeah. And that's, that's not going to work. It's okay. got to be done. One of the things you do in a rewrite yeah. is you look at the magic what if. What if this happened? Mm -hmm. What if that happened? And you're open to everything. I mean, the key to a rewrite is be open to change. Don't think, this is my story, I cannot change it. If it needs to change, you need to let it change. Mm -hmm. And if people give you notes, which I'm gonna talk about in a little while, you need yeah. to be open to the notes. Yeah, I was reading in your book, you said when you are writing the very first draft, try to stay away from rewriting as you go. This is your, your process. The way you- It should be everyone's. Everyone's, yeah. And, but you said you can reread your pages the next day and make notes on them. Right. So the first rewrite would just maybe, to me it seems like you would go through your whole screenplay and address all those notes. Right. Right? That you made as you, as you, made as you went along. Right. I'm big on not going back to the beginning because you need to feel like you're the greatest writer that ever existed in the history of the world as you charge through your first draft. I like that. And this is gonna be great. Yeah. This is gonna be great. I'm gonna get done and it's gonna be fabulous. Then you get done, then you become much more realistic. And you go, well, this isn't fabulous. Mm -hmm. But if you go back during the writing process of getting to the end of the first draft, if you go back, you're gonna suddenly see things that are wrong and you're gonna to wanna to change it mm -hmm. and it just becomes a nightmare. I've done that. Yeah, yeah don't do that. <laughs> just finish it and get, yeah where you're going. I mean, yeah. the, that took a, a writing course from a woman in New York. She was big on in television and she said, write fast, write badly. Okay. You can do that. I can do that. I guarantee you, you can do that. I do do that. And then yeah. once you write fast, write badly, okay. then you go back in there and yeah. fix it. Fix it. But if you don't have it, you can't fix it. That's right. So you have to print your work to rewrite and proofread. You have to print it, which costs a lot of money. Yeah. It's a pain in the neck, yeah. but you cannot look at the page in the computer and find typos for one thing. Yeah. So you need to print to rewrite and print to proofread. And okay. I've been doing this forever and I don't like spending the money on the toner and the paper. Yep. And I'll do seven drafts 
in the computer and then I go, well, it's time to print it. Okay. And I go, I don't need to because I've been doing this for a long time. And then mm -hmm. I print it because I know I'm supposed to. Yeah. And I find all kinds of mistakes, mistakes and it just keeps line. getting better yeah. and better and better. And I'll do. So you don't I'll, print every draft? Or are you saying I should? I print, ev I print everything. You do, okay. Because it's the only way, and I grew up on a typewriter. It was very easy for me with a typewriter because you pull it out and you got a hard copy mm -hmm. automatically. Right. People that begin to write now on a computer, they don't have a hard copy unless they make themselves create one. But it makes a gigantic difference to sit there with the, your brain connects in a different way mm -hmm. to the page when you have a hard copy. No one believes me, but you will. Yeah, no, I, I love um, having something in my hands to work yeah, on. You have to. <laughs> yes. um, did I mention print to proofread? I did. Okay. You did, yes. So I, will do I like doing, I like to do a one line outline of every, every character relationship, which is you and I have a relationship and so we you just take that out of the whole story and just look at that. So you save the script as oh. Will and Irish uh -huh. and then throw away everything else and just look at those, print those pages. Okay. And Bob and Carol, Ted and Alice, Alice and Bob, Alice and Ted, all that. You look just at one relationship at a time and you can see the problems in that story. And this is a function on the computer or do you actually you have to do go it. through? Yeah. You just go through save as whatever you want to call it, these two characters, uh -huh. erase everything and else. Get rid of everything else. And print that relationship. Okay. It makes it really, you can really see what the problems I, are. I hear that. Especially That's, if the page number, yeah. like Irish has been gone for the last 32 pages. Mm -hmm. That's not a good idea. <laughs> So, Keep me in um, okay. or you can do the spy story or the bank heist part mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Right, the, the different storylines and kind of make sure that, okay. And then when they work, you're good. I mean, one of the things you need to do in this rewrite, now that you were very kind to yourself in the first pass, now you got to be ruthless because the reader's going to be ruthless. Yeah. It's very important that you have to really look at what's there yeah. and say, does this work or do I hope it works? Well, I, there was one quote in here that you said, one of a Hollywood reader said, I'll read as far as the first typo. So yes. you better not have one. <laughs> you don't have them. And really and truly, if you have a hard copy, you have a much better chance, chance. of finding typos than if you don't. The, okay, so the terrible middle. So Thank the you. terrible middle is happens to everybody. It happens to me, it happens to everybody. I'm learning how to paint. I haven't painted in 40 years, so I'm taking painting classes. And the other day I was working on this painting and I hated it, and it was terrible. I was two days in, and I said, this is awful, I'm just gonna quit. Mm -hmm. And I thought, don't do that. You're not gonna quit when you're right, don't quit when you're painting. And like an hour and a half later, I'd solved the problem, and now I'm okay. Mm -hmm. But I really wanted to just paint it out. So this happens to everybody. In the middle of the story, it falls apart, the work gets really hard, you hate yourself, blah, blah, blah. I was at the beach over Christmas in this beach town where they had a lot of artists, and I went in this guy's gallery, and he was, he, we were talking, he just said, you know, I got this painting, it's, he was halfway done. It was about four feet by six feet. Mm. And it was blue ocean, there's a little white waves, a little bit. Yeah. And he said, right now I'm really happy with where this is going. I'm really pleased, but he said in about two weeks, I'm gonna hate it and myself. <laughs> he said, I'm gonna wanna quit, mm. but I'm gonna keep fighting, I'm gonna struggle through and it'll get better and then I'll be fine and I'll be happy with it. Mm -hmm. Now this guy sells paintings for $30,000 a okay. piece. And so if that's happening to him, sure. it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. You just no, have to inspiring. know yeah. that it's normal and it happens to everybody. Yeah. The, um, Winston Churchill said, if you're going through hell, keep going. I saw that, I like that. Yeah, I like all your quotes. That's what it is, I mean, that's it. But it's nice to know that it isn't just you. Right. Everybody feels terrible about their work in the middle. I've got a friend who does quilting and she said a lot of her friends in the quilting guild, they get halfway through their quilt, they hate it, they wad it up and shove it in the closet. Even quilters. <laughs> Any artistic process, yeah. basically. Yeah. But that, what we're here for is writing. That's right. Yeah, and so it's natural that that would happen to us as well. Yes, and so when it happens, just figure, when you start, this is gonna happen. Sure. So when it happens, you go, oh, this is happening. This is what it is. It's supposed to happen, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna yeah. stop. Now, we're gonna just touch on tighten your language yes. up. Because I like how you're like, nobody really wants to read your stuff. <laughs> well, that's so sad. I know. You what? wrote it, and then nobody oh. wants to read it. Oh. But they, oh, they, when they the pick up words. your script, they want two things at the same time. They want to love it and have it be fabulous, and they can sell it and make a lot of money. That's what they want. They also want it to be terrible so they can stop and read the next one, uh -huh. and then read the next one, and then go have a drink. They're conflicted, yeah. Yeah, so all you have to do when they start, they love your script. 
They love it. Right? You read fade in, now just don't disappoint them. Okay. Uh, but no one pressure. of the problems is when they pick up your script and they're at page one, they can't tell if you understand character. They can't tell if you know what an act break is, but they can tell if you can write a sentence. Okay. And so a clear, clean, concise mm -hmm. sentence is going to stand out. And people, did I mention English English teachers? We've mentioned them. Some of my English, uh, some of my favorite people are English teachers. I'm still in touch with my sixth okay. grade English teacher who took care of me when I was at school. He was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but they, when you want too many words, and people want to show off. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, I know all these big words, or I can yeah. write these sentences that are yeah. really hard to understand, which make me look smarter. And maybe in a novel that would be great, right? It isn't great in a novel. This is never great. <laughs> you, don't you want like it, it, you want it. So here okay. is this is the all time finest page of screenwriting right there. Oh, That's like, the easiest page okay. to read there is. Okay. Your eye, notice your eye starts at the top and falls with <laughs> no effort to the bottom. It's lovely. It's the best. Bianco. So stay close to that if you can. Okay. So do we want to talk about? Examples? I think so. Let's, um, yes, you brought some examples. I did. A very innocuous first paragraph in a script. There it is. Behind me, right? I'm looking at it. I know what it is. Okay. So this looks totally harmless. It's just a paragraph. What could be wrong with this paragraph? It's five sentences, which is like the top end of what you're allowed to have. Is five, five lines in a paragraph. Three is better, two is better, but five is the tolerable level. But <gasps> that slug line, oh my, it, it's on two lines. That's against the law. I don't like that. You can't do that. So that's a problem. So also, there's two spaces between fade in and the first slug line. You can't do that either. That's against the law. So <laughs> take out the, the comma after the word Florida. That's got to go. You need to replace that with a hyphen. Oh. You get rid of Happy Village Garden and just say, in Sargasso, Florida, Japanese restaurant night, and you're back up to one one. Um, sentence in the slug line. Because what, what this writer is trying to do is give the uh, the name of the restaurant. Yeah, we don't care. We don't need it though. Yeah. There's, it's, I hate to say, there's some things we don't need to know. Okay. You may think we need to know them, but right. you don't need to tell us stuff. Okay. And go to the next, go to the next page there, please. So there are the five lines, there's the shorter the slug line, and there's a typo <gasps> after the word cover. It should have been covering. As a, yes, the, walls, the person yeah. didn't print a proofread, obviously. Oh, okay. So those are the things you want to do, and you change garden to restaurant, and you're good to go for this step in the process. Okay. So let's there's look several at the, steps. There's several steps, okay. yes. So let's go to the next one, please. So here in my book, I have this list of seven deadly sins of writing, and there are 13 in the book, and now it's up to 31. Really? Yes. And okay. so is, 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 and is, they're all circled in those R. Are, Right. The forms of to be you want to get rid of because they weaken your writing. Okay. And then the, 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 and the, mm -hmm. that's also one. So if you write down there at the top, oh, also where it says restaurant, yeah. in the slug line, the you slug don't need line. to say restaurant, restaurant, restaurant in your paragraph. You don't want to repeat. Right. You don't say interior restaurant. Look, we're in a restaurant. restaurant. We're still in a restaurant. Yeah. You don't need to repeat right. what's in the slug line right. partway through. So, and then the last mm -hmm. thing you can do is if you write cliche decor, which solves that whole first sentence can mm -hmm. go away. Yeah. Just say cliche decor cliche. and you're good. So I pointed out, now this is really funny. I've only read this 20 times. I missed a the. <laughs> no. The very first the I didn't notice when I created the handout. Oh. So print to proofread. So keep, yeah, you can't, you can't go over it too many times. Okay, so okay. let's go to the next one and we'll right. see the results of what we did this last time. Okay. So the original one's still up there. It's getting shorter, you'll notice. So I there's like cliche it. decor. Yeah. Now, the front half of whatever, you just say half seating, half buffet. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. Right. And then at the very end, you get rid of the and is is all that's left. Just say filled with customers. Because mm -hmm. screenplay grammar isn't exactly correct grammar. It's just so they get it and right. move on. Right. And then this is a format mistake. Customers needs to be in all caps because those are actors and they have to be hired. Right. So okay. when you meet them in the story, they have to be in all caps. Okay. So make that change all right. and now we're done. So go to the next okay. one, please. It's going to be exciting. Oh, this is See great. See how, how much So there's the original. The original's on top. And the new, now correctly rewritten short one in, is it's nice, right tight, clean, concise. Oh, and it is so much shorter. It's so much shorter. So much shorter. And, and the, so reader the reader will be so much happier. Very, very much oh. happier. Yeah, because yeah. this is, that takes so long to read. 
Yeah, you when you read the, the when you read the bottom one vision in your head. Yeah, you read yeah. the bottom one, you get it. Yeah. Now you read the top one again, and you go, "We didn't need all that." No, no, it it slows it down way too much. But it tells Appreciate you what you have right, to yeah. know, and that's all it is. All it's supposed to be in the action description is what do you have to know to understand what's going on. Well, if we could all do this, I think everyone's screenplay would be. Tons better, well, a it's, lot better. It's the, I love to say this out loud. My book is on the on a website called scriptreaderpro.com. It's the number one screenwriting book and has been for four years. And one of the things that they say about it, they told me, they said, you talk about the writing. Nobody, this stuff, this my book uh -huh. in the middle is so boring because it's just <laughs> about how to write a this. sentence and get right. it shorter and shorter and shorter. Yeah, the deadly sins, uh, the 100 ways to yeah, make, it make it great. Yeah, it helps. I mean, the, your yeah. goal in writing a screenplay is to get them to read to the end. Right. That's your number one goal is to get them to finish it. Definitely. Well, you kind of helped me segue, I think, into uh, one of the last things we wanted to touch on, which is how to give and receive notes because you do that. Is a, you know, something the one of the things I do for money is I critique screenplays. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Okay. And I have for 20 years. Um, and it's fun to help people and see their scripts get better. Yeah. Now, if your first draft was perfect, you don't need notes. No. But if you're ruthless on yourself, you're probably going to need notes. And yeah. one of the hardest things about notes, well, let me tell you about me. Okay. This is what I, you read my script. This is all I want you to say to me. The only thing I want you to say to me, I weep. At your genius. <laughs> that's why I'm paying you money. <laughs> no, no, that's why when you read my script, uh, I want you, you to, to say, say to me, to you. I weep at your genius. Sure. So far, no one's ever said that. No, not if, no. Sorry. But what you don't want to do when you're getting notes is get defensive. Right. It's like, because I'm not going to say to you, I weep at your genius. I'm no. going to say, here's a problem, and here's a problem, and here's a problem. But the, when I tell you there's a problem, that's something you can fix and make your work better and make the, the important person mm -hmm. read to all the way to the end. Right. So that's really hard to do. It's hard to open yourself up to criticism because notes are criticism. Right. The thing you wrote isn't perfect, but it's a process. Right. You, if you get notes from a friend and they say the thing you wrote isn't perfect and you make it more close to perfect, it's going to get better. So be open to the notes. And I write down everything everybody tells me. So if I come to you for notes and you say, I just start typing as fast as I can go and I get it all, because let's say you say something that I think is not a great note. Okay. Like this one thing you said, mm -hmm. I'm going to write it down. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what I think when sure. you're telling it to me. First of all, I'm going to buy the lunch because I'm, thank you very much for giving me notes. But I write down everything you say because like two weeks from now, that note that I didn't think was that great may suddenly be revealed to be the game changer. Mm -hmm. So you write down everything they tell you when you get notes, but you don't argue. So here's a little story. Okay. This William Goldman wrote the script for Princess Bride and Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. So he was like arguably the greatest living American screenwriter. Mm -hmm. And a friend of his said, hey, Bill, my son's written a screenplay. Would you please read it and give him notes? And so Mr. Goldman said, yeah, I'd be happy to. Mm -hmm. So they go down to the coffee shop, go down to the coffee shop. And so he opens it up and he says, okay, I've got some problems here with act one. Mm -hmm. This is the best screenwriter, screen, this is the best screenwriter yeah. in the country. Right. And he's going through and every single thing he says about act one, the kid argues with him and says, you know, why that's not right. And so Goldman gets the end of act one, closes it and said, and the rest of it is fine. Oh, and handed okay. It to him. And that was the end of his note session. Yeah. So don't argue with the notes. You I may agree. think they're the worst notes you've ever gotten in your life. That's Doesn't right. matter. Just say thank you yeah. and write it all down. Yeah, the act of giving and receiving notes is not to debate who's right or who's wrong. It's a, this is this is what I saw and this is what I found. I've, I've got a friend who's a screenwriter. He's got he's a screenwriter producer. He got 55 credits on IMDb, and he wrote a Broadway play and he wanted notes from me. And he said, Look, I'm going to send this to you, but he said if you can't summon brutal honesty. I'm not interested in your opinion at all. That's because he wanted to make yeah. the thing better. Yes, exactly. That's the goal. Yeah, it is. So if you're giving notes, because you like you're giving me notes uh -huh. on mine, don't say, don't tell him it needs to be a giant rewrite. Okay. You know, and don't say instead of Nashville, why shouldn't it be on the planet Saturn? 
that's not helpful. Okay. Be helpful. Try to get stuff that they're going to be able to use when you're giving notes. Uh -huh. But again, when you're receiving notes, take them all in right. and really listen and be glad to get the notes and say thank you and pay for the lunch. You mentioned um, you suggest not giving out to a lot of readers all at once to kind of... Right. Uh, so let's say you've got five friends of yours or ten friends of yours that want to read your script and give you notes, which is fantastic. That would be great. So you don't want to <laughs> give it to all, you don't want to give the first pass to all ten at once because if they all say it should be on the planet Mars, then you, you've wasted eight of those you reads. You have to get everyone to, yeah. So what you do is you give it to like two people and hear from them and do those changes and give it to the next two people because people who will read your work are precious and to be taken care of. And so you don't want to waste their time if you're, and your time also because you want to use them as judiciously as possible. It's a very generous thing and a lot of our members do that. We do it for each other. No, absolutely, because you give notes. Yes. You're going to be a better writer because you read someone else's script and gave notes. Uh, yes, you that's right. You learn the problems in your own work right. by finding problems in somebody else's work. And, and so it's, it's, it's a, a really bartering. The, I do it for you, and then and they'll then give you, you notes. Yeah, absolutely. It it's the really whole well. ball game. It's very, yeah. very important. So, William, this has been so much fun. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. And could you just tell us what you're up to now? I'm writing. Can't stop writing. Of course. I've got a website, keytostorytelling.com, where I give script notes. Oh. And then uh, we are doing recorded lectures on writing. And then one of these days soon, we're going to do live Zoom screenwriting classes. Oh, that's great. And there's lots of free stuff on the website, handouts and things that I think are important and will help you be a better writer. And Instagram, can they At be? At Story. Oh, Dailing. it's the same. That shows you how much. Isn't that clever? <laughs> it's very clever. You only have to remember one thing. Yeah. Thank you so much on behalf of Page to Screen, William, for joining us here tonight. Thank you. We'd like to offer you a standing invitation to come back anytime. So to find out more about the Tennessee Screenwriting Association, including our meeting schedule and our programs, Check us out online at www.tenscreen.com or check us out on Facebook. You can click the code on your screen to find out ways to join TSA. We meet online through Zoom every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central, except for the last Wednesday of the month when we meet here in the studio. So, William, do you have any other uh, last words you want to say? Print the proofread. <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.